Hey everybody, Brittany Rutherford here. Today I'm going to teach you how to merge faces together using Photoshop. I'm going to provide written directions below if that's your thing and you want to follow along that way. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so once you have your two images open, you want to determine which picture you're going to put on top of the other. So I'm going to choose her face and put it on her body. So we're going to start with her face. You want to zoom into your area. Then we're going to lose, use the lasso tool to create a non-geometric selection. That's your third tool down. And we're going to select around her face. You just want the eyes, nose, and mouth. And it doesn't need to be perfect because we will refine it in the next step. Once you have your selection, that's all you need with this picture. You're going to click your move tool, which is your top tool. And then click and drag. Hold on that tab. Do not release until you're on top of your next image. Now you'll see my images are vastly different in size, so we're going to click Control T, and then we're going to bring down the size of this face. Now I want to have it about the same size as this one, and I'm noticing they're looking in opposite directions. So I need to flip this image. I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, and then Flip Horizontal. I really want to get the eyes, nose, and mouth aligned, so I'm going to lower the opacity of my top layer in my Layers panel. Opacity just means transparency, so we're going to lower it a little bit so that we can see through to the background layer and still see the top layer. If you double click your hand tool, you can also make this full screen. So with that selected, you're going to make sure the eyes, nose, and mouth are aligned as closely as you can. Obviously, I'm putting a girl's face and an adult's body, so this isn't perfect, but we want to get it as close as we can so that it looks realistic when we go to the next step. So eyes are the most important thing to me. The rest kind of falls in line. So I think that's pretty close. We're going to raise the opacity again and then click the confirm check on the toolbar. Now you'll see there's some areas of this that are still not perfect. So I'm going to create a layer mask. In your layers panel near the bottom, there is a square with a circle inside of it. And that's how we add a layer mask to a layer. If you've never used a layer mask before, it basically just allows you to refine your selection in a non-destructive way. So in order to use it, you want to have the layer mask selected. So that's that white linked box next to your original layer. And then you're going to go to your brush tool. Your brush tool is about midway down. Now, you should have either black or white selected in order to use this. Black and white are your default colors. If you don't have them selected, you can click this little box above the foreground color, and that will bring black, white back to your foreground and black back to your background. I'm going to switch those so that double arrow right next to that, those boxes flips the colors back and forth. So with black selected as your foreground color, you're now going to comb over this image with your brush. So you'll see I just put an X on it and that removed part of the image because when you're using a layer mask, black hides and white reveals. So think about it like a t-shirt. White will be revealing and white and black will hide. So black hides, white reveals. So with black selected, I made this big mistake on here. I'm gonna flip my colors, use white to bring it back. Now, when you're creating a layer mask for this activity, you need to have a hard brush. So go in your control bar. You want to make sure the hardness of your brush is all the way up, and you want to select one of these hard brushes. I clicked hard round. Whatever you do, just don't click these soft ones because it doesn't create clean lines. And then you want to use the brush size, whatever is appropriate for what you're doing. I clicked 20 pixels. So once you have the black selected, you can start moving and cutting out your image. Now I'm going to cut around the sides. You really don't need the forehead in there, so I'm going to cut that out. I do want to keep the eyebrows because the eyebrows are a little bit different on each of them. I'm going to cut in the hair, on the face, and then this extra part of the face that overlaps down here. All right. Once you have it how you like it, you're going to apply the layer mask. So on your layers panel, right click on the layer mask and click apply layer mask and that will flatten that back down. Next, we need to duplicate the background layer. So we're gonna click on that background layer and then drag it onto that little plus sign at the bottom of the layers panel and that will create an exact copy. So we should have three layers total, the face image for layer one and then the two background layers at the bottom. So we need to now select the face layer. I'm going to click control on my keyboard and then click that layer thumbnail. And that's gonna select everything on that layer. That's just a keyboard shortcut for selecting everything on the layer. Next, I want to click the middle layer. So I have the selection of the top layer, but I'm actually clicking on the middle layer. I'm gonna now go in my menu bar, click select, modify, and then contract. 
So how many pixels you put here is going to depend on the image that you're using. But for my image, I'm going to click three pixels. I'm going to click OK. Whatever you do, make sure that there is an obvious different difference between the outside area and your contracted selection. So then we're just going to press delete on our keyboard. And if you hide the top and bottom layers, you can now see that those pixels are actually removed. That's where we deleted them. I'm going to put everything back, bring all the visibility back. I'm going to control D to deselect my selection. And now we're on our final step. So you want to shift click your top and middle layers. Hold down shift, click both of them. Then you're going to go up to edit and then click auto blend layers. Make sure stack images is selected when that dialog box comes open and then click OK. That's fine if that pops up. And then you have your completed image. Now, if there's anything that you see, there's like a little bit of brown edges up here. We can flatten this. So if you right click and click flatten image, now it's back to a single layer. So I can use my spot healing brush if I want to go through here and clean some of this up. I can use my clone stamp tool, any of those tools to make this as smooth looking as possible. So there you go. Combine any two images into one new picture using Adobe Photoshop. Like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you liked this video.